Hello, hi everyone. Um, today's uh, video will be an intro video, uh, introduction video to how to play the Chinese sheng. The Chinese sheng is actually a Chinese wuyi instrument, which consists of three rigs. So um, I will introduce some shengs to you today. There are various types of shengs just beside me. In front of you, this is the 17 rig shen, which is sort of considered a traditional shen. So in the past, normally the tradi traditional shen only got 17 bamboo pipes and fitted with around 13 to 14 rigs. That means although there are 17 bamboo pipes, only 13 to 14 rigs. And that means only 13 to 14 pipes, there's a, you can produce a sound from it because 3 to 4 pipes, bamboo pipes, there isn't any rigs being attached to it. So in general, the basic construction of the sheng consists of these bamboo pipes. Okay, this, this bamboo pipes is made of glided bamboo, the wind chest, which is this made of brass, and the mouthpiece. So I will go straight to a simple intro video on how to play the sheng. So I started off actually playing the 17 rig sheng more than 30 years ago. So my very first sheng is not this sheng, but I started off with a 17 rig sheng, which, which is considered the most fundamental sheng and the basic uh, entry level sheng. But in fact, um, I got associated with sheng is because of my, during my secondary school days, actually I was um, not actually in the Chinese orchestra, uh, um, during my secondary school days as a co-curricular uh, activity. So actually I was in the school badminton team, but um, I guess I don't really play the badminton well, so I was being kicked out of the team, and this is how I landed in the Chinese orchestra as a co-curricular activity uh, during my secondary school days. So actually I started playing the dizi, which is the Chinese flute, uh, as my first orchestra instrument. In the next year, I switched to shen. In fact, I did not start playing this traditional shen. I started off with the Odo shen, which is the Zhongying Pai shen, uh, with, um, which is fully chromatic, 36 notes. And slowly, I move on to play this 36 rig soprano shen, which is the San Si Liu Huan Jia Jian Fan shen, which, is, which has 30, 36 keys, no tone holes, and it's also fully chromatic. So actually, I started off with the Zhongyin Sheng, the Odo Sheng, followed by the Soprano Sheng. And both Shengs are actually modern Shengs, fitted with keys or buttons, and it's fully chromatic. But after one, a few years later, I got associated with the tradition, traditional Sheng, around two to three years later, and I was in a community club, Chinese orchestra, during that, during that time, and I managed to use the orchestra 17 region to get myself started, to get myself associated with this 17 region. I started playing, learning the traditional sheng under my teacher, uh, Mr. Er Chan Song, Yu Chan Song Lao Shi, uh, who is a very important teacher in my sheng learning journey. Uh, because of him, I get exposed to different traditional sheng playing techniques and got associated with different types of shen. Basically, I can play most of the types of the shen from soprano shen, auto shen, bass shen, lu shen, and the other types of uh, shengs. So, I started on playing with 17 rig shen, and in fact, I got my very first 21 rig shen. This is 17 rig shen. So the difference between 17 rig and 14, 21 rig shen is there's four more pipes inside here. So I got my first 21 rig shen in 1994. But uh, my 21 rig shen, I'm not showing today because uh, it's somewhere in one of the cabinet and I seldom use it nowadays. It's really 30 years old right now, the 21 rig shen, my very first shen. So this is another 21 rig shen. Basically, I got two 21 rig shen. The first 21 rig shen is fully amplified. What do I mean by fully amplified, which is every bamboo pipe is fitted with a resonator. The, the brass resonator, the main purpose is to actually amplify the sound and sort of to beautify the sound because 
the pure sound from these bamboo pipes uh, because the different bamboo pipes got different density, different thickness, different diameter so the sound might not be very consistent for every single note so with the use of the brass resonators, it's actually, uh, it will actually actually beautify the sound so this is 21 Rikshan made of Huan Jing Zhu uh, some, some of the maker called it golden bamboo which is a different type of bamboo from this two shen these two shens are made of zi zhu, which is called violet bamboo uh, I have forgotten what is the scientific name and there's also another scientific name for this golden bamboo so in Chinese they call it Jing Zhu so actually you can see there's four more pipes inside here four more bamboo pipes and the mouthpiece is fitted with one ABS plastic uh, what, what is the purpose of fitting an ABS plastic? because you notice my 17 rich shirt there isn't any uh, there isn't any piece of plastic mouthpiece or wooden mouthpiece even for my this bigger shirt which I will show later the main purpose of having a plastic plate over here or a wooden mouthpiece is to prevent you to have direct contact with the brass actually this is made of brass and it's nickel plated so actually some players could be allergic to nickel so it would be best to have a mouthpiece you call it a plastic mouthpiece or the wooden mouthpiece to paste it over it so that you do not have direct contact with the nickel or even brass itself so this is 21 region and you might be wondering how come there's uh, some bamboo plates over here and inside here as well uh, generally actually all these are DIY, I do it myself because um, my hands are ra rather huge and I find that this shrink is rather pretty small, small for me and certain tone holes, I can say the angle, the height is not suitable for my fingers I have long fingers and large arms, uh, large palms so I DIY, I cut off this I DIY all these uh, bamboo plates from one long piece of bamboo and I cut it and drew a hole and to sort of use this plate to slightly, I can only slightly realign the height that means up and down of the tone hole and to raise the height of the tone hole so you can see and you can see there's two bamboo pipes which is this bamboo and this bamboo where I seal up the top or the end part of the, this bamboo pipe uh, this is because there's a tone hole over here so this tone hole actually is very near to the top of this bamboo pipe and this tone hole is actually the height that means different bamboo pipes there's different tone hole to determine the tone, the pitch of the notes although it's also determined by the reed, by the reed itself also by the tone hole because this tone hole this is the perfect dimension from the reed to here is a perfect that height for the correct pitch but it's very near to the end point and there's also some air escaping from the top that's why I find that the resonance is not very good so I seal off this pipe and the other pipe over here using a cord uh, after that I just in pour, pour, uh, I, after using a cord I just also included some bee wax on top so it's very, being sealed to have better resonance so after bring the night after I started playing the 21 Rich Shen and I got interested in Anna Shen because of one album one Shen solo album actually during that time is there's no CD yet it's cassette tape so it's uh, by Shen Master uh, Mr. Wen Zhenfa Wen Zhenfa Laoshi because of that particular cassette tape uh, all the pieces are played using a 37 Rich Shen 37 Huan Yuan Shen because of his solo pieces and the way he played, I got attracted by this 37 Rickshun and I managed to go and search some search for some info about this 37 Rickshun and happened that my teacher, Mr. E Chang Song, Yu Chang Song Lao Shi, is one of his first overseas students to learn the 37 Rickshun from him. And through my teacher, I got my very first my, sorry, my very first San Shi Wan Fan 37 Rickshun from Shanghai in 1999, 1999 uh, the shen which you are seeing here is not my very first 37 rich shen this is my second 37 rich shen I think I bought it around 2005 or 2006 I can't recall really uh, so what's the difference between this shen and the other two shen? 
uh, this is fully chromatic. It has 37 pipes, fully chromatic, and it's split by covering the tone hole or by pressing on the key itself. You can just take a look. Uh, I can say this is. I also adjusted some of the tone hole, the height of the tone hole. Or that means the height from the bottom to the top, or even the height of uh, of the tone hole. That means to lift the tone hole so that I can touch it easier. So you can see, uh, this is my one of my favorite shunk. The, this make in Shanghai. You can see. It's pretty heavy, but I'm used to the weight already. Nowadays, the newer version of this 37 rich shrimp should be even lighter. So I use this shrimp for many occasions, even for solo pieces, or even in an orchestra. Although I also play the 37, uh, 36 street soprano shrimp, which is you have to place it on your leg, or on your leg and it's also fully chromatic, but sometimes I prefer the British shun because it's more portable as compared to the other Gaoming shun. Okay, I will go straight to the point uh, on how to play the shun. Um, it's not advisable actually to start playing this 37 rich shun because it's pretty heavy, there's a lot of notes, and if you do not have any basic foundation of the traditional shun, it could be very difficult for you to master this instrument. But however, if you start by playing the, the 36 street soprano shen, san si huan gao yin fang sheng, or san si huan zhong yin shen, the 36 street auto shen, it might not be as difficult as learning to play the traditional shen. Um, I can say that 21 rich shen is one of the popular shen nowadays, although if we exclude 37 rich shen, in, um, I'm referring to the traditional series, chuan tong sheng, uh, there are actually different types of Traditional shun apart from 21 reads. Apart from 21 reads, the other common ones could be 24 reads, 26 reads, uh, 28, 27, even 29, up to 32, which I've encountered before. But um, there's no point actually to collect uh, different types of shun in between 21 to 37. Uh, you could actually start off with a 21 or even a 24 read. Or maximum, I would suggest uh, 21, 24, or 26 rich shen. After you go straight to the 37th, uh, don't waste your money by buying a lot of shen 28, 29, 30, or whatever. There's no point. You can even start with 21 rich shen straight away. You can go to the 37 rich shen. So, step one how should you hold the shen? It's pretty straightforward. Actually, there are in um for the traditional shun actually there's two system. Uh nowadays the most common system which I'm going to teach common system is the he bei zhi fa. He bei zhi fa you play in this manner by holding shun. I will give a short intro about the Shanxi zhi fa. That means this fingering is from the Shanxi province and it's slightly different from the he bei zhi fa. They hold it like this in this manner. So three fingers inside. Last pinky finger is here, and actually, on for your left hand, the, you don't use your ring finger or even the pinky finger. You press in this manner the Shan Xi Zi Fa. One, two, three. Middle finger here, thumb in front, and your middle finger or ring finger can control the tone hole inside. So this is a Shan Xi Zi Fa, which I. Don't use this fingering. I don't practice this fingering. Uh, I actually I use the most common traditional shen fingering, which is the he bei zhi fa. Okay, so I will go in depth later on. How should you hold the Chinese shen? Let me. I'm now in the sitting position. Uh, whether is it sitting or standing position, the way you hold, the way that you hold your shen should be similar. Okay. Okay. So you should just take a closer look, it should be in this manner. Your two arms, the chicken wing over here, actually should form a Chinese character 8, Fa, Chinese character 8, something like that. Can you see it? 
I will pause for a while for you to remember this posture. Your right hand can right elbow can be slightly lower, left elbow slightly higher. This is because normally when we play the traditional shun, we tilted this shun a little bit to my right hand side. Why is it so? Because so that I can read the score in front of me. So when you are holding a shun, right, your two shoulders should be in a relaxed mode. Two shoulders. You shouldn't be playing your shun in this manner. It's very tense. You should play. Two shoulders should be in this manner, very relaxed mode. Your neck, muscle, everything should be in a relaxed mode. Should not be very tense up. Okay, how do you use your fingers? You have your left hand, your right hand. So I go start with my right hand first. Basically, inside there are, there are a few tone holes, right? Your right index finger will control the first tone hole, second tone hole. You see, the first tone hole is in the most inside, followed by second tone hole, third tone hole. The fourth hole is over here. For the fourth tone hole, is a bit different. We don't use the fingertip, we use the third joint. When I meant by first joint, second joint, third joint is first joint, second joint, third joint. So I will use my third joint to press the fourth tone hole. And for this outermost part, use the set. I also use the third joint. So let me repeat myself. Just now I did not make myself clear. For this fourth tone hole inside, you should use a second joint, not third, second joint. So I use my second joint in this manner to press. This one, hole, second joint. This one, third joint of my index finger. And the front tone hole, which you can see, I will use my thumb. One, two, three. I use my thumb. One, two, three. Sometimes when there's a need, I can also use this press on this hole using this thumb or this thumb. I can interchange. There are certain occasions where I want the phrase to have, uh, to be more connected legato. So I will try to even use this thumb to control this so that I can split my two thumbs to press this note and this note. So it's pretty straightforward for your right hand. And on the back, basically on the back, you don't use your finger, a uh, pinky finger. You only use your middle finger and your ring finger. So there's two tone holes here. Middle finger, second joint, which is here. This tone hole, middle finger, second joint, and your tip of a middle finger. And this two tone hole, you use the ring finger, second joint, this hole, this one. Second joint, ring finger, ring finger, tip of your ring finger. Cool, I have covered right hand. Now left hand, straight forward. Left hand, your thumb will cover this tone hole in front. And we don't use our pinky as well for this this shun, 21 mission. So you can see uh, from the back, these four pipes belong to right hand. Starting from here, Fifth, from this side, fifth, use your ring finger, ring finger tip, okay, middle finger, index finger, you can see here, uh, ring finger, middle finger, index finger, and this is also left hand, index finger, but second joint, I will show you later. Second joint, which is pressed like that. Okay, you can find out more about the fingering or even which finger should you use. Uh, even the fingering chart from my website, the shunplayer.net, the shunplayer.net, N E T dot N E T, which you can find this 21 rate fingering chart. Uh, I have included two types of fingering charts because I have two 21 rate shunk. Both shunks actually have slightly different fingering. So I'll include it for your reference, but because there are many makers, so I can say that there are many types of fingering. I can't say it's a drastic variation, slight variations of the fingering. So but in general, the basic notes 
on the placement of the note should be similar, 90% similar. So the lowest note of this sheng actually, this is a D key sheng. Like, this instrument is a diatonic, it's not fully chromatic. It do not have a lot of notes, um, semitone or whatever. Um, not really semitone, that means from the lowest note to the highest note, it's not chromatic. I can say that and it's a D key note. It's the lowest note of this sheng is the D, which is uh, the D just above middle C on the score. Using a staff score, a D below the middle C, which is D4, the scientific uh, notation for it is D4 and the highest note of this one is F sharp 6 F sharp 6 so I'll just go through the D major scale of this one with you um, because um, it's a D key one. but before I start with the fingering from the lowest note of the D major scale to the highest note I'll just go through the basic foundation of how do you how do you blow the shun uh, the sheng actually is a bi-directional instrument where you can blow, exhale and inhale, exhale and inhale because the sheng is fitted with three reed, three reeds. So actually, it's um, two direction, a um, bi-directional instrument where you can blow, exhale and inhale. Let me demo by pressing one note, which is the one of the note, which is D five. I'm trying to. Exhale first. Before you exhale, what do you do? You should breathe in first. Inhale, air. And when you inhale, two shoulders should be relaxed. Neck or area should be relaxed. In inhale, breathe in deeply and try to push the air down using a diaphragm. Okay. So breathe in. Two. Okay, I forgot to tell you. Is there any emotion? For playing the sheng, there's no I can say there's no specific embouchure because it's different from like playing the flute, the clarinet, the saxophone, or even the Chinese dizi. There's no specific embouchure, but there's one thing you must take note. You just need to place your mouthpiece near to your mouth, and you just just have a smiling face, slightly smile a little bit. This will do. Ensure that there's no air leaking from the left and right the sides of your lips. And when you blow or inhale, I have exhale and inhale. Try to keep the side of the two cheeks flat. Uh, uh, although I know sometimes it might be difficult to control where certain music, certain phrase you're pressing a note on notes or uh, harmony, you need more air, you might slightly um, be. That means um, the cheeks might be slightly enlarged. But try to avoid. That means when you play, try to avoid to brain this when you exhale. Or when you inhale, don't do this. Try to do this now, I'm going to try to demo exhale and inhale. Try to play naturally. Now I'm doing ex exhale. I'm breathing first. You can use your nose and your mouth simultaneously to breathe in. I'm breathing first. Now I'm doing inhale. Cheek should be relaxed. Okay. First note. D4. The lowest note. I'll just mention a note name. I'll start from the lowest D to a D4. D4 to a F sharp 6. There's two octave plus three notes. Okay. The D is the innermost note. This is D4. Inside. Followed by E is in front. Okay, from this first bamboo are one, two, three, four, five, the fifth one, E. This is E, you can see. E. F sharp of the D major scale. Here, from innermost, the fourth one is your G, second joint. After that, from the last one, two, three, the third one is your A. This one, this one, your A. After that, your B will be here. From here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one, 
from here, the seventh one is your B. Can you see your B? And here your C sharp. B, C sharp. Oh, sorry, your C sharp is here. C sharp. I made a mistake. The, just now, this C sharp placement, which I mentioned is a wrong one, it's actually the 17th rich shun fingering. So it's over here. It's here your B, your C sharp. B and C sharp. B, C sharp. Okay, after that, you have mastered your B and C sharp. Okay, there's some extra notes, uh, noise because I think there's some issue with the read. Yeah. And your D is uh, this fourth note. Now it's another octave for D5. E, F sharp is inside. E and F sharp. Your G. And left hand, middle finger, your A. A, B, A, B, your D major scale, which is your solar C. A, B, C sharp. Your, so, your D major and next octave, which is your D6. Green finger. And E, your E6. See, this is your C sharp. From your C sharp here over is your E6. Sorry. This is your A, B, C sharp. Move one step, and another step is your E. Left rock thumb. And the last note, the first part, F sharp 6, which is the highest note. Strange, there's some noise from this one, some issue with the read. F sharp 6, from the back, this one. So I've covered from the lowest note, D4. D4 is one note above middle C and the highest note, F sharp 6. Not sure what's wrong with this one. Some funny note. So I have gone through the basic fingering of playing the shen using the 21 read shen as, as the entry model of playing the shen and I briefly described how should you bri brief, uh, how should you build a shen that means you can exhale and inhale uh, and, and because there's time constraint I got no time to go in depth of how to make use of diaphragm to exhale inhale you can go in google uh, using google and go in google some topics on how to use your diaphragm to grow an woodwind instrument, something like that. So before I end, maybe I just give a short demonstration of this shum by bringing a short uh, part of one piece. Hmm. Pardon for the, sorry for the extra noise formation because I think there's some uh, issue with the reach which I'm not going to resolve it. So just now I forgot to mention something. Uh, these two notes, which is using the left index finger, why do you need to use your tip of your index finger and your second joint? By doing this, actually you can move faster. Tip, second joint, which is your B to C sharp, and your A to D, right ring finger, also do this move on one finger, you can control two notes using your tip and your second joint. It's strange, a lot of funny sound. Don't know what's wrong with this string. I'll just demo a very short phrase. Um, sorry for the extra noise if you happen to hear something funny. So 
uh, let's play some short phrase because I find that I've also attached this, uh, you see this bamboo, bamboo plate a little bit too low and it has been obstructing my finger over here. So it's difficult to move around. I might need to readjust the tone hole again. Let me see whether it's station better, got less noise. my need servicing as well uh, I have not touched this 17 rate and 21 rate for quite some time and it might require some servicing already so today what I have covered is um, how to play the sheng which I use with 21 rate sheng which you can also google 21 rate sheng 21 huan sheng or sometimes we call it 21 huan chuan hong sheng 21 huan yuan sheng you can even get it from uh, the Taobao website there are various ways where you can purchase your shirt, even on eBay as well. I saw quite a lot of uh, listing for the only one rich shirt as well. Uh, so sorry that uh, this shirt got technical problem, which I need to resolve the read issue. There's a lot of addition noise, which I have not touched this shirt for quite some time. This shirt I have not played for a long time, and there's also some issue with the reads, which I also need to resolve. So sorry, I did not manage to give a good demo just now. And if you have any questions on how to play the Sheng, uh, feel free to visit my Sheng website, the shengplayer.net. The Sheng is just spelled P H E S H E N G P L A Y E R dot N E T, the shengplayer.net. Uh, there's an online form, you can just drop me a text via the online form if you have any questions about how to play the Sheng. So, um, thank you so much for watching uh, this video and remember to subscribe my channel. Thank you. Bye bye.